Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. Here's the good news tonight. Every single one of us in this room right now have something in common tonight. Everybody here. Everyone. There's no way that anyone gets out of this one. We all have in common tonight um, is that we all want something. Or we all desire something. Or we all have been praying about something. Like we heard tonight, someone is believing for something specifically, Erica, right? And, uh, and it looks impossible in the natural, but with God, all things are possible. Aren't you glad that God has an answer for every impossible situation in your life? Like, just look in the Word. There's an answer for all of it. And I know that there are people here that are either uh, wanting or believing or standing for healing, clarity, maybe some purpose. Maybe you feel like you're just aimless and, and you're just really not focused and not seeing purpose. Maybe uh, someone here is looking for a prayer to be answered by God. You've been waiting and praying and, and waiting and praying and waiting and praying. And, 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 and that's, that's probably many of us right now, things that we're praying about. Maybe you've been believing God for you, having the, the courage, the wisdom, the, the how to remove things out of your life that are not benefiting you. You know, fears, anxiety, uh, trust issues, forgiveness issues. I don't know. This is popping, so can we fix my mic, please? Stephen? Thank you. It's just like popping. It's like going blop, blop. And, uh, or there's people here that want a deeper relationship with God. You know, you're just like, you're coming here, you come to worship, and you're like, yes, I want more of him. I want to know him deeper. Uh, I want to know... Uh, a different angle of Jesus. And that's, that's my hope. Every single week when I prepare my messages, I always pray, God, give me another angle to, to preach your word, Father. Not, 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 not mess with the message because the message does it. Listen, God's word is powerful. He didn't need my help. But, but, but people do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so I'm like, God, show me an angle where I can connect with people's hearts, Father, so that we can look at the scriptures and say, wow, okay, um, I've, I've never read it like that. And, and so I pray for it. So that's something that I'm always wanting. I'm constantly asking God, also, God, I need, I need a next level in my life. Anybody ready for a next level in your life? Like, come on, are you, aren't you, like, tired with the old you? Like, ah, that same old you. Like, you know, God wants us to remember and, or to be reminded that he created us by design. And what do we do? We default back to the old person. God designed you to be amazing, creative, awesome. And uh, I also know that God wants every single one of us here to get better. He wants us to grow. He wants us to progress. You know, I love what Felicia was saying. I didn't know she was, you know, going to say what she said tonight. But that's exactly where my sermon's going tonight about the promises of God. Because we, we hear too much promises. Do you realize that the whole Bible is a book of promises? I mean, if you're saying, well, I, I don't have any promise. Sure you do. You just haven't opened the book to look, look for them. It's a promise book. Do you realize that there's over 5,000, it's like 5,200 something prophecies, 2,500 and something of them have already come to pass? That means that there's only 2,000 plus prophecies that have yet to come to pass before the return of Jesus Christ? We have to look in the Bible and we have to start looking at what is the promise of God concerning my situation? What is the promise of God concerning my healing, my family, my health? What's the promise of God concerning my wealth? What's the promise of God concerning my purpose? What's the promise of, what is the promise of God? And God wants us to experience him in a fresh and new way. Why? Because he wants us to step into a promised land. Every single one of us. You have a promised land land look at your neighbor and say you have a land that you have to step into okay let me see let me see all my single people lift up your hand if you're single lift up your hand come on let me see all my now wave it in the air because you really care right like because you're like i hope someone sees me tonight right? yeah well listen you know where your land is i'm sure 90 percent of the single people would love to get married yes or no oh. okay well, then you have the land of no. That's cool. But some of you have the land of yes. And how many want to step into that land if you desire to get married one day? Well, obviously, it's like, hello, that's a land. 
And you have to step into that land. How many desire to own their own business one day? You want to be the most, not just, not just be an entrepreneur for the rest of your life, right? Someone that's always just saying, I'm an entrepreneur, but never, never launches anything. <laughs> I, I, I don't like that word. How many want to land their business? Let me see that. Okay. Hello? Do you see how there's a promise for you? This is where you engage and say, yes, pastor, yes. Or just say amen. Yeah, just, yes, okay, I got, okay, good deal. I know you're used to my wife. She's all sweet and everything. And <laughs> don't do it. So, so listen, there's a promise for all of us. Whatever you're believing for is your land. And you have to step into the land. It's not an option. It's not a suggestion. It's a promise. And God wants us to step into this promise, land. But how many know that many times the reason that we do not step into the land is because we spend more time in the desert than we do walking to the land? Isn't that what happened to the Israelites? Just wandering around the desert. Remember, they're walking around the mound. Remember that nice song about the mound? What's that song? How does anybody remember how that song goes? We'll be going, yeah, coming around the mound. Yes, we will. And they got sick. And you know what God said? God is like in heaven looking down, like, what is wrong with these knucklehead? What are you doing? He said, Enough. Stop it. Stop camping. Stop, stop complaining. Stop making up every reason why you're not changing. Stop blaming everybody else for your dysfunction. Stop it. We have a promise land or a land of promise. I didn't call you to go in circles. I called you to take steps. I called you to walk. I called you to move. Everybody say move. God called us to move, not to stand. God called us to progress, not digress. Every single one of us here have to progress in something in our life right now. Maybe you already are married. Maybe your marriage is not as awesome as you want it to be. Well, guess what? Then that's the land of promise that we have to step into. Maybe your kids are not, you know, as obedient as you want them to be. Well, then you have to get them to the land of promise of obedience. So we all have a land, and we have to understand that because if not, you'll sit here with, with dead spiritual ears, and every time you hear the word promised land, you check out because you realize, like, well, I don't have a promised land. No, you all have a promise. Every single one of us, God has given us a promise. Every single time that you open your Bible, that is a promise. When God says you're the head, not the tail, you're above, not beneath, when God says you'll be blessed coming in, you'll be blessed going out, is that a promise? When God says it is by the stripes of Jesus Christ that you are whole and healed, is that a promised land? Yes. Right? When God says call those things that be not as though they were, those are promises. And so we have to get a new revelation and understanding. If not, we become so spiritually dry. And you just sit there and you're hearing, but nothing's changing. Because we're not stepping into new promised lands. Every single year, you should be stepping into more land. Yeah. Some of you are like, well, I'm not in my promised land yet. I've been saved for 20 years. No, you're in the land. You just haven't walked it all out. And we need to walk out this land. And it's going to take steps. Look, it was Zechariah. I didn't give this to the media team, but Zechariah 410. It says this. It says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. We know we want the, uh, the instant. Where's my instant cup? Throw it up here. Just throw it up. Thank you. We want the instant. Anybody like a cup of noodles? Remember this stuff? I used to eat this stuff really bad when I was like super poor, poor. Like, like when I was P, like, like Po, P-O-O, it was, it was the stuff in the bag, the ramen noodles, right? Because that was like way, that was like 10 cents a bag, right? When I was poor, P-O-O-R, it was insta new. It was amazing. But isn't it amazing how we want everything insta? I want it now. I want my healing now. I want my victory now. I want my family now. I want everything now. Well, listen, if you want everything 
instant. Well, then get a cup of noodles. However, you still got to boil water. Then you got to still pour the water in. Then it has to go ahead and, and soften the noodles. Then you have to eat it. Then did you, you probably didn't know this, but it takes three days to digest these kind of poor stuff. This stuff is bad for you. Don't eat this. It sits in your intestines for three days. That doesn't sound like instant, huh? Anybody want instant? Oh, anybody want this right here? Yeah, you want it? <laughs> Angie, you're in trouble, Alfonso, when you get home. You're so in trouble, dude. She's like, no. <laughs> so so, so here's, the tr- here, here's the truth. So, so we, all, we all go through the same stuff. Listen, all of us, we all go through the same stuff, every single one of you. We're just all at different levels right now. See, what, what he's going through, I'm probably not there yet, or I've already probably experienced that, conquered that, and I'm moving on. What I'm going through, he's probably hasn't experienced it yet, but he's on his way. And we have to realize that every single one of us, in whatever season you're in, in whatever steps you're in, you have to understand that everyone has, everyone has or everyone will go through what you're going through right now. They just haven't arrived there yet. And when you start seeing things like that, you'll stop complaining about why it's not happening fast enough and realize that there are some steps and there's a process in order for you get to get to the next level. And, and I want to talk a little bit about that tonight. Is that okay? Okay. Uh, so look at what Martin Luther King said. He said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Let me read that again. He said, faith is taking the first step. What first step do you need to take tonight? What's the first step you need to do right now? And I don't want to give you the answer. You should think about that based on what I'm saying tonight. What are some first steps you need to take to to get you to that that destination? What are some steps? It's not that you're going to arrive to the destination, but you're going to start pointing to the direction of destination. Like, what step? Because so many of us, we want to see every step. And, and, and we see Dr. Martin Luther King, someone who loved God so much. And when he made this statement, this is so profound. Faith is taking the first step, even when you don't see the whole staircase. When God gives a promise, he doesn't give you the whole thing. He'll give it to you in pieces. Every bit of it. It's always in pieces. When, when, when God gave us the vision for Elevate Church, let me tell you something. Yeah, he said, okay, the vision is open a church. So we got here. The next step was like, is anyone going to come? And will anyone keep coming? And will this church keep growing? Will lives keep changing? Will we be impactful? Will we, will we do every single promise that God gave to us on the vision that we have? Would, would, and you start, and if you're not careful, like what I was sharing during worship, you can become so overwhelmed that you stop moving because when you start thinking about everything that needs to take place, you start kind of giving up before you even take the first step. And God wants us to take some steps of faith tonight. Look at what Exodus 23, 30 says. It says, little by little. Everybody say little by little. That's what the message is about tonight. We need to realize that God wants us to do things little by little, but God is wanting us to enjoy the process of little by little. Look at this. It says, little by little, I will drive them out before you. What does that mean? That means that there was something or someone that was getting in between the children of Israel and their promise. And right now, whatever promised land you're trying to step in, let's just take the single, I want to get married. And it's been forever. And you've been like praying for this for like five years. And you're just like so angry because you're not married yet. Well, you know what? Between you and the gap of your promised land is probably a process that you have yet to begin to address. And that person could possibly be you. Could possibly. There's some things you haven't addressed in your personal life. It's not that you're not attractive. It's not that God doesn't have the mate for you, right, the spouse for you. It's that maybe, just maybe, you haven't taken the steps to start the healing in your own personal life because God forbid that. Aren't you glad that God hasn't answered all your prayers? Because some of you have prayed, like, for, you know, the Fabio-licious and, uh, you, know, you know, Sister Goody, whatever, and then all of a sudden you meet, and then you really meet them right? You really get to know them. And then you're like, oh my God, who is this person? 
and but you pray like this is the one and it doesn't end up being the one and you're like what was i thinking and aren't you glad that god did not answer that prayer right there like you start thinking about stuff like that or you get linked up with someone you're about to start doing business with and then things start falling apart and you're like oh my god i didn't realize that this person has a lack of lack of character and so you have to understand that when god does something he does it little by little so he says, so little by little, I will drive them out from before you. In other words, that means he'll drive out anything that's inside of you or he'll drive out anything that's outside of you. He'll drive out. He will push back anything. That means that he'll want you to go in the way of progress of maybe driving out your emotional dysfunction. You know, maybe you're always up and down and all around and it's a constant roller coaster. Maybe that's what God wants to drive out and you haven't let him. Drive that out. Maybe you've, you're, you've been just gripped with fear. It's constant. You're afraid to make a decision. You're afraid to trust God. And God's saying, I want to drive that fear out of you, that anxiety. I want to draw it out of you. I want to drive it out. I want to pull it out. I want to root it out. Maybe there's, there's, some, there's some, some lust issues. Maybe there's some anger issues. And God's saying, I want to drive it out little by little so many times we know that there's a dysfunction in our life we know there's we already know what the issue is but we get upset with ourselves we we quit on ourselves because it's not happening fast enough but i really believe when you read this right here when you when you link up with god when you hook up with god then you can begin to deal with it little by little when you keep doing it your way it's longer and longer and it doesn't work. It doesn't, nothing changes. Look at the children of Israel. A 14-day journey ended up being 40 years. 14 days. So he says, so he says, so little by little, I want to drive your insecurities. I want to drive out your offenses. I want to drive out your lack of forgiveness. I want to drive anything and everything out that is keeping you from stepping into your promised land. And he goes on to say, until you have what? Increase. Until you have what? Is that verse up there, guys? Until you have what? Increased. So do you see, do you realize that God wants the land more than you want it? <laughs> That's the sad part, huh? That God wants it way more than you want it right now. Like some of you are like, oh, wow, I do have a promised land. God's like, man, I've been trying to tell you this. I have something special for you. I have something unique for you. You know, I want to bring increase into your life. I want to bring increase into your marriage. I want to bring increase into your workplace. I want to bring increase into your bank account. God wants to bring increase to anything and everything that you touch. Wouldn't that be awesome that anything that you touch just prospered? Like anything. You prayed for someone, they got healed. You know, you go to work, you start a new job, man, you get promoted. Right? Like, wouldn't you want that kind of increase? You go to school, and you've been out of school for a minute. You go there, and all of a sudden, you have increased wisdom. You actually understand more. Like, it's interesting. I went to six high schools, bad boy. Didn't go to college. Didn't do any of that stuff. I'm self-taught. I'm self-motivated. So I'm a big reader. I read, read, read. I learn, learn, learn. And it's interesting that today, I know more than most college students that are in college. And I'm shocked. I'm like, how does that even work? I'll tell you how. The Word of God. The Word of God will renew your mind, and, of course, you apply yourself right you're you got to be a fat christian yeah you got to be faithful available and teachable <laughs> look at your neighbor and say are you fat <laughs> yeah 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 are you faithful are you faithful are you faithful to the promised land are you faithful to god's word are you available or are you always making excuses? Are you teachable still? I know so many Christians that, my God, you're trying to give them counsel, wisdom, and it's this. I know, I know, I know, I know. It's like, then why the heck do you even ask me if you already know? So you, you have to be teachable. You have to have a teachable spirit. You have to keep growing in the things of God. That goes for all of us here. And so he says, and so I want, I want to drive all the, he says, I go before you, and I'm, I'm wanting to drive all them enemies out. And we know the story, of this, this is the children of Israel going to the promised land, and that all the, the enemies coming against them. And he says, until you have increase and you inherit 
the land. Don't you wish you had like a rich grandparent? Like just filthy rich and, and then when they pass away, they left you an inheritance? Like I don't have any of that, but I'm like, Lord, just find someone, Lord, and just <laughs> give me someone that will give, leave me an inheritance, something. But how many would love to just inherit something, right? That would be amazing. Look, that's, what, that's your heavenly father. God the Father leaves an inheritance for every single one of us. We have an inheritance in God. And so we can't be overwhelmed because God wants to help us little by little. Now, how will he do that? By our continual dependence on God. It has to be continual. It can't be like one moment I trust God, the next moment I don't trust God. One moment I'm with God, the next moment I don't believe God. It can't be. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work. God wants to walk with you. God wants to help you through it. God wants to go with you. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the verse says that, says that the Lord went before them. Do you realize that God has already been to your promise? Like he's already walked in it. He's already been before you. I, that gives me so much peace just reading that. You know why? Because when you read the, the full context of the story, and when he says, when the, the scripture said, you have to read too many scriptures, I can't read through them all. But it was talking about the angel of the Lord. And it says that the angel of the Lord would go before the children of Israel. In other words, God already had a promised land. God already had a vision. And the angel of the Lord would literally go and fight the battle, the spiritual battle that was trying to hinder from the kids, God's kids, getting to their promised land. And so the angel of the Lord would go. Now, that was Old Testament. But if you study the full context of this story in Exodus chapter 23, what's the, what is it? Uh, Exodus 23? Put up 23, yeah. So if you read all 23... Okay, that was a symbolic, when it says the angel of the Lord, it was really Jesus Christ himself going before God's people and making a way for them. Why do you think he's called the way, the truth, and the what, and the life, right? So this, this going before them was God sending his son before them. God has already sent his son before us. Anything that you want to obtain, any land that you want to possess, God has already been in that land. God has already blessed that land. God has already touched that land. All you need to do now is you need to keep going. You need to keep taking the steps and you watch and see what God will do. Amen? Amen. I tell you, it's so powerful. And then while driving out the enemy uh, before uh, you arrive is the most, like God, God went before Virginia and I before we started this church. Like that's, I just, I think about that. Like God already he saw all this before we ever we ever experienced it tonight and when i read verses like i'm like man god you're so faithful like he's been before any storm i've been through god was already there and god was ready to heal and set free and deliver god is already in your promised land he's already gone before you so instead of complaining and thinking like man how's this going to work god's already been there god's already touched it god's already anointed it you know what the problem is? Is that we want Insta. And then we get frustrated. And then you know what we do? We just hang out in the wilderness and that doesn't help. So we have to have a reality check and we have to start, you know, stop saying, you know, I'm waiting on God. The reality is that God is waiting on us to keep moving. To keep moving forward. He said, little by little, I'm allowing you to go through your struggle. Little bit by little. There's a process. There's a process. And you know what that process is? The process of you being responsible with that land. You gotta be, you gotta be responsible for it. You think that God's just gonna give it to you? No. He didn't just give it to the children of Israel. They had to go possess it. And I know we don't like to hear that word responsibility because that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure. Like, what do you mean I'm, I'm responsible for this? Do you know that for your your healing, for your body, you're responsible? God's not responsible for that. God's responsible to, to see his promise be fulfilled when you're willing to believe and trust him for it. That's faith. You got to believe him for that healing. There's people that say, well, why didn't that person get healed? They did not have enough faith. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know why some people get healed. Why others, I can't explain that. But I have seen the people that literally they just take hold of God's word and they devour it like nobody's business. And I think that we have to get to the place where we have to grow up in this mindset of being responsible for the promised land that God wants to give us. 
We just want it instant. It's not going to work that way. And so the children of Israel had to keep walking. They had to keep going. They had to keep moving. So they had to do these three things. I, I, I put these on the screen for you. They had to, number one, they had to walk out their steps of obedience. They had to do that. Right now, God is asking you, are you willing to walk out the steps of obedience? The second thing they did is they had to exercise their own faith in God's word. And here's the quick question I have for you. Do you, do you own your own? faith or do you borrow someone else's because they had to own it <laughs> and we got too many christians in church that are borrowing it. someone can you pray for me oh my god if the pastor doesn't pray for me it's not gonna happen stop it <laughs> come on you got faith now i get it i can touch in it the bible says when two or more get together in my name and they pray concerning anything there i'll be okay that's cool but if, if you're just chasing people because, ooh, uh, Mara, she's so spiritual. Wow, if you look at her, she's got like, like five gifts of the Holy Spirit. And if she just prays it, oh, my God's going to happen. Like, we got to stop that noise. Stop borrowing faith from someone else. Own your faith. Own it. When you learn to own your faith, you're going to start seeing greater progress spiritually. When you own your faith, you're going to start seeing greater progress physically. When you own your faith, you're going to begin to see greater process and greater progress in your children. But you got to own it. If you don't own it, how do you expect your children to own their faith? Yeah. You got to own it. You got to own your faith and stop borrowing someone else's faith. And I get it. When you first become a Christian, you got to borrow some faith. But at some point, we got to grow up and we got to own some faith. The third thing they did is that they had to believe that there was a promised land. The good thing is that they did start out believing there was a promised land. But throughout the process, throughout the walking, they forgot there was one. And that's when they started just going around the mountain. Are you going around the mountain right now? Where did you stop? Where did you camp? You have to ask yourself right now, where am I camping somewhere that I was never meant to camp? God doesn't call you to camp. God calls you to move. God didn't call you to be a settler. God called you to be a mover and a history shaker. God called you to do some things for his kingdom. Amen? I, regardless if you have a wonderful career, God bless you for you and your career. But is there any Jesus in that career? Is there any Jesus in that call? Is there any Jesus in that industry? Is there any Jesus in whatever it is that you're doing? Because I'm telling, it was funny last night. Is um, Jenna here tonight? Jenna, are you here? Oh, Jenna, last night we went out with this couple. They work a lot, so, uh, but I'm sure they would be cool, me sharing this. So we were, we were having dinner last night with them, hanging out, her and her husband, and, uh, and they saw some friends, and, you know, they're like, hey, and they're like hugging, you know, they're like, hey, and they're like, oh, here's our pastors, whatever, whatever, right? And, and then they're like, oh, yeah, what are, you, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're here for the bar. And so they, they go to the bar. And, and you know, it, at this restaurant, it's, it's a lot of seats. And then there's the bar. And we happen to be in the bar area. Not that we're sitting at the bar, but we're sitting next to the bar at the dinner table. And, but anyways, uh, this woman had, like, this big old, you know, um, thing going on. She's an actress, and she was about to do a movie in three more weeks. And, and she injured her knee and, and just started talking about it and, uh, and, and I'm hearing her say all this, and I'm thinking, man, this is going to be amazing. This is awesome. And so I told him, like, hey, uh, before we leave tonight, we're going to pray for her. And they're like, right here? Like, yeah, at the bar. <laughs> and so and as we kept eating, talking, and everything, and we were getting ready to leave. And then, you know what, uh, the husband, he had to go to work that night. And I'm like, oh, we can't pray for her right now. But then Jenna's like, no, we're going to do it. And so she goes, hey, um, you know, how's your knee doing? And we just went for her, like, you know what, can we just... Can we just, I just want you to know that the Father loves you, and he wants your knee healed, and, and he cares about every little part of you, and God wants to do something special in your knee. This woman just starts busting out in tears, crying like a baby. We start praying for her at the bar. You know how she said it, like, right here? Like, yeah, right here. I mean, you're sitting there, right? Might as well just go for it right here. And, and I'm telling you, the, 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 the love of the Father hit this woman so hard that she could not stop hugging my wife, couldn't stop hugging them, couldn't stop hugging me. She's hugging, like, and she's like, you don't even know. You don't even know what this means. You don't even. See, she had to believe that God also, whether she had Christ or not, which she didn't, that God also had a promised land of healing for her too. Amen? Amen. What am I saying? You're responsible to help others reach their promised land too. It's not just about what you want. It's about what am I doing for someone else to reach their land through their process. Amen? 
And so the next step is going to be her coming to Elevate Church. It'll happen soon. <sighs> but we have to realize that this, this, this book has so much. Look what Hosea 4, 6 says. Hurry up. We got to get out of here. It says, my people will be destroyed because they have no knowledge of me. You have refused to Now, I looked up the word refuse in the Hebrew, Greek, and all the deep, and you know what it means? To refuse. It's just that's just reject it. So deep. I know. I was like, wow. You push back. You're always pushing back. You push back. It's like, well, you know, prove to me that you're real, but you push back. How's that going to work for you? God wants to show himself raw and real. God's done with the push back. God wants to drive through and drive out. That's what God wants for every single one of us. But he says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowing me. When you don't know him personally, that's when the destruction comes for you. When you know him personally, that's when healing comes. That's when breakthrough comes. That's when empowerment comes. Why? Because he is all power. He's everything you need. And he says, and you have refused to learn. What does that mean? That means that you stop growing. And God does not want you to stop growing. God wants you to keep growing. God wants you to keep going. God wants us to keep progressing. But the only way to do that is we got to learn Jesus more. We got to be in this word more. We got to understand what he wants to say to us. And it's, and once again, and it's not instant. It's, it's a process constantly, whatever it is that you're believing for. Uh, quickly, uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. And then we'll close with this with a little illustration. It says this, every scripture, everybody say every scripture. Are you guys okay tonight? Okay. Very quiet, but it's okay. Every scripture has been written by who? Okay, so back then, you had the angel of the Lord that would go before them and help them and do stuff. Okay, but now, look what we have. So every scripture has been written by the Holy Spirit. The breath of God. Wow. Wouldn't you love to just have a little bit of breath of God in your life right now? Like maybe you're gasping. You're gasping right now. You're just, you're, you're, your faith is just, ah, it's, not as, it's not as potent as you want it to be. And it's just dragging, kind of like, ah, you're just bored. Stop blaming the church for boring, huh? You're boring. <laughs> no, seriously, yeah? Look at you and be like, you know what? It's really, it's really us. Just look at them. Just say that. Help me out, will you? Just say, I think it's just us. <laughs> we do. We get boring, don't we? We get so, like, I want to be around people that are, like, excited. They're telling me, like, like, hey, man, guess what? This is what I'm doing. Not like you have a season of, like, things are happening. There's a season of nothing's happening. That's so boring, Right? Like, you want to be around people like, man, what's going on? What's happening in your world, right? Like, what, what, tell me, like, what are some new testimonies? Like, get me stirred up, you know? Like, share some things that are happening. Not, not that, like, how are you doing? Oh, it's good. It's like the same. It's like, ah, oh, you, just, you, just, oh, you just want to turn away and walk away. We just, we get, we get so complacent, guys. We can become so complacent and so comfortable. And, man, we got to keep this thing fresh. And the only people responsible for fresh is you and Jesus. Nobody else. It's not your spouse. Your spouse doesn't keep it fresh. You keep it fresh with God. You keep it fresh. Born comes in when we stop knowing him. When you stop connecting with him, when you stop, like, really wanting to know him intimately, that's when you stop. You stop growing. You, you start becoming very bored and and then you just feel like, man, nothing's good happening in my life. And how many know that's the trap of the enemy? Isn't that what, what Satan did with the children of Israel? They're walking, and they're walking, and they're believing all the lies. And 40 years later, they never entered. They died. How sad for you and I to die and not accepting the fact that God had a beautiful land, a promised land for your life that you never got to see. You got to stop. He says, it will empower you by its instruction and correction. Look at what the Holy Spirit does through the word. He'll empower you. He'll instruct you 
and he'll correct you. I think the reason that most of us aren't further is because we have not allowed him to correct us. We just hear instructions but no correction. Giving you the strength to take the right direction and lead you shallower. To lead you how? Deeper into the path of what? Godliness. Do you know the reason we get bored is because we're losing our godliness. We get bored because we're losing our saltiness. We get bored because we're losing our light. And when you lose your light and your salt, it does get boring. God called us to have flavor. Your salt. Your light. Verse 17, then. Everybody say then. Yeah. See, then when you get it hooked up, linked up with the Holy Spirit, then you'll be God's servant. Fully mature. Fully mature and perfectly prepared to fulfill any, any assignment. Listen, your promised land comes with assignments. Any assignment that God gives. That means that there's not just one promised land. That means there's many of them that you are called to conquer. There are many of them that you are called to possess. He says, because if he's saying, I have an assignment for you, that means that there is a process of you walking it out with God. You must walk out with it, with God. So there's two things that this scripture tells me here in, in, in this verse. Number one, God gives the resource before he gives the assignment. God gives the resource before he gives the assignment. And number two, the greater the assignment, the greater the assistance. That's what I really believe. The greater the assignment, the greater the assistance. And I remember when I first came to Christ, uh, I went to church. And I saw like, man, like all kinds of great Christians in church. And, and they were just like so gifted. Like they would pray for people and, and people would like fall. I'm like, wow. Like, did they push them? Like, what did they just do to that person? Like, why are they being so violent, you know? And like, God, I'm, I'm, I, was, I was a radical, uh, saved Christian. Literally, I went from like Saul to Paul. I literally, I was like, anything that I was reading, I just want to do. I tried walking on water in my pool at, at the apartment <laughs> complex. I did. I did. I tried it. It didn't work. It didn't work. But I tried it. I did. I, I'll never forget it. And I was like, God, if, if you called Peter, then you can call me. Call, call me now. And I'm like, I thought I heard his voice. Come. And it was, it was my head. It was, in my, it was in his voice. You know, and I literally just sank, man. And so, you know, but then you start looking at a lot of other people in Christian. I'm like, man, why are they so good? Like, it, it's like, let me get you two guys. Come up here and, uh, and let me come up here too. Yeah, just stand up here. You know, I would look at these people and, and, and Steve will get up here, and I'd be like, man, because how many gifts of the Holy Spirit are there? Nine. They got another word. Okay, so I'd be like, man, this guy's got like three gifts. Like, good Lord, like he's awesome. And then I'm like, oh, but this guy's got four. And then, whoa, she's got like seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then you started numbering people like, wow, how does she do it? She's got nine. And so you start comparing yourself based on what other people have, and you, fought, you fail to realize that you have all the gifts of the Holy Spirit for every assignment that God gives you. And so many times we just look and we look and we look and we chase and we chase and we chase. We want that next word. We want that next prophecy. Nothing wrong with all that. I love all that stuff, okay? But man, let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you and he wants to help you in every single season of your life. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal God himself to you. But that only comes through the Holy Spirit. And we need to stop looking at people like numbers, like, wow, you have more gift than him. And he has, let me tell you something. We all have the same Holy Spirit. And if we have the same Holy Spirit, then we have every single gift. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. What does that mean? What does that mean? I'm going to take this off. This thing's like falling off. So here's the Holy, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is like a tool belt. I don't think everybody operates in one moment in all nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. I believe that the Holy Spirit will give you whatever it is that you need, whatever gift, whatever, whatever, whatever 
is going to help you accomplish that assignment, the Holy Spirit will give it to you. Put up my verses, please, in 1 Corinthians. Look at this. It says, and each believer is given sometimes continuous revelation by the Holy Spirit to what? Not just himself, but what? Keep going. For example, the Spirit gives to one the gift of what? The word of wisdom. To another, the same Spirit he gives the gift of what? The word of revelation and knowledge. And another one. And to another, the same Spirit he gives the gift of faith. Do you realize that faith is also a gift? Like sometimes, you know what? We all operate in faith, obviously, because God said he gave us all mustard seed faith. But do you realize that there's such thing called a special faith? Like some things require special faith. Like your faith is not enough. You need Holy Spirit special faith in order to accomplish whatever it is that you need. And to another, the same Spirit gives gifts of what? Healing. And to another, the power to work what? Miracles. What in the world? You mean I have the gift of whatever assignment is given to you. God has equipped you with every spiritual gift. Because think about this. Okay, this ain't going to work. You know why? Because this is not a nail. It's a screw. So what do I have to do? The Holy Spirit says, okay, Mauricio, you need that gift. Right? Okay, let's say you had other things and you had, let's say, no screw gun at the moment, but you had a screwdriver. So the Holy Spirit will give you a screwdriver. So every single gift that we have by the Holy Spirit, God gives those gifts in order for you to accomplish your assignments. The reason we don't accomplish those assignments is because you're not, you don't know you're gifted. You don't realize what's inside of you. The reason the children of Israel never made it to the promised land is because they never realized that God was with them every single step of the way, even though he provided for them every step of the way for 40 years. So it wasn't, a, it wasn't a matter of that they were failing God. It was a matter of that they were not changing their mindset about God. You have to come back to the Holy Spirit. You need him. Let's keep finishing this. And to another, the gift of discern, uh, to discern what the Spirit is speaking. And to another, the gift of speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to another, the gift of interpretation of tongues. Remember, it is the same Holy Spirit who distributes, who what? distributes who also what activates and who also what operates these different gifts who operates them so stop putting the pressure on you when we prayed for that woman in the bar you think it was like oh pastor ruiz has come to save the day praise god finish your drink lady i'm going to show you a deeper buzz and his name is Holy Spirit. No. You're just, listen, you're just the person, the body that God has placed the assignment on. The rest, the pressure is on God. What he needs from you is full dependence of him and full obedience of him. And the rest is up to him. It's up to him. This church is hard. Doing this elevate church is so hard. Oh, it's so sometimes so stressful. Like God has to remind me many times about this church. Like I was so, you know, Sunday, it was crazy. We had close to 600 people. We turned away 30 families. You know, you know what stresses me? Like, God, we need another building. We need relax, Mauricio. <laughs> Don't you think God wants it more than me? See, but I forget, I think that I want it more than God. No. God wants the promised land more than you'll ever want it. God wants it more. God wants the healing for your family more than you want the healing for your family. When you start getting the right mindset, you'll start seeing the right breakthroughs. When you get frustrated, you're losing godliness. When you get angry, you're losing godliness. When you lose patience, you're losing godliness. What does the Holy Spirit do? He empowers you to live a godly life again. Can we give the Lord a hand clap for that? Yeah. So, go back to your first love. What assignment has he given you? That you have been doing it in your own strength. 
and not realizing that the same angel of the Lord that went before the children of Israel and who drove back and drove out the enemies in order for them to possess and to inherit. And obviously we know that only two inherited the promised land, Joshua and Caleb. The rest, the 14 million, they all died in the desert. So you can be the 14 million or you can be the two that says, as for me and my household, we're going to possess this promised land. And you go for it. And you're anointed and appointed. And some of you are double jointed. <laughs> but whatever it takes, stop being so mundane. And I say that with all love. Wake up. Go lay hands on someone. Go pray for someone. Go encourage someone. Allow the Holy Spirit to use you. And as you serve others, God will serve you. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.